Hey all, I'm Tom Moran and I have big spiders. And that's not how it goes. Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This episode we're going to continue with the little short rehousing videos. I got a bunch of these I'm going to be putting up because they're generally juveniles which don't take me as long to rehouse so there's not as much time for me to chit chat. Anyway, in this episode we're doing Sotharacanthus cyaneus or the Cuban orange violet. I was having trouble finding the actual common name, but gorgeous little dwarf species, obviously from Cuba that has beautiful blue tones, orange tones, brown tones, just a very unique looking spider. One I'm very excited to have and be able to raise up. Right now, this one's pushing about inch and a half or so, and supposedly females are mature at two inches, so we're almost there. So we figure it's time to do a little update on her and check on what I've been doing with her and what we're gonna be putting into her now that she is a juvenile slash young adult. So enough of me chit-chatting. Let's get into the actual video. All right, we're about to house my C. Cyaneus, or Cyaneus, whichever way you want to pr uh, pronounce it. We picked these up from Tom Patterson, who is a very different human being than I am. There is still confusion between the two of them. Daily, I get emails from him. I think he's uh, for him. He gets emails for me. We are two different people, which should be apparent by the very different last names. I don't know how this gets mixed up. I know we both do the tarantula thing, but I write about them, make videos about them. Tom breeds them and does a lot more important things with them. But Patterson does not sound very much like Moran, so I'm not sure yeah, how that gets confused. Yeah, Patterson. totally different. But pick these up April 30th, 2020, or pick this one up, and it's been a darling. I'm hoping to get a shot of it because it's starting to show some of its adult colors, and it's in this little... Hopefully this, well, 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 I don't know if it's showing up, but it's got the reddish. Oh, yeah. Really cool spider. And the growth rate, I think when we got this one, it was about a half inch or three quarter inches. I'll have to go back. I have the video, so I will obviously, I'll run some clips if we have the, the original housing of it of what this one looked like originally, but it was obviously put into this dram container, which is one of those, what, about three by inch and... Uh, inch and a half across or so. I'll put the size up there afterwards. But it's been growing rather quickly. It's been eating great. Now this is one I do want to point out that it was a little smaller when I put it into this. And what it did one point is it burrowed all the way down to the bottom. I saw that it molted and it did not return back up to get any food. I was putting prey items in there and it wasn't coming to get them and I was doing pre-killed so there was nothing up there moving. So what I did is I opened up a little bit of hole in the top and dropped a dead prey item, pre-killed prey item right at the top of that, and it came right up, grabbed it, came right back down and ate. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, this one here, I'm not giving it as much substrate because I wanna make sure that it doesn't bury itself to the point where it can't find the food. But what we're gonna try to do, hopefully, is get this one out in the open. That would be amazing if you just do this. No, no. There we go. Please stay out in the open for a minute. I really, if you wanna get a shot at it before it boogies. We can get a nice good zoom if you want. You can see the, the red starting to come through. Actually, the purple showing up a little bit, the bluish. You can see the bluish yeah. on the feet. Really cool looking spiders. If you look them up as an adult, I didn't know too much about these before Billy, actually Billy bought this one for me. I believe, was it a Father's Day gift or a birthday gift? Something. I think it was something, it was a surprise and I was really excited because I had seen pictures of them online. I'm like, ooh, those are stunning. So we got one here, really excited to grow it out. Hopefully it's a female because the females look very, very pretty. Just a cool spider. Now, obviously, again, what we had it in here was the old dram vial, which it did well in. I did keep the substrate moist at all times. The substrate in here, this container here, I believe is about two quarts. I get them off of Amazon. I will put a link to that because I do have a link to it. Although I think last I tried to order them, they were out of stock or they weren't currently selling them. So just a heads up there. But offers about an eh, inch and a quarter substrate over here to the back. I gave it closer to two and a half or so. So it's got some room to dig, but also not so much hopefully that it gets lost. I do have moist substrate on the bottom and I allow it to be a little dry on the top. We have a little bottle cap water dish. I put in some leaf litter because I just like the way it looks and smells and the spiders tell me they like it too. I lied, they don't uh -huh. tell me anything, but okay. I like to think they like it. And then we have sphagnum moss, obviously over here. Somebody asked what kind of sphagnum moss. This is the New Zealand sphagnum moss. I like this stuff. I haven't had any problems with the molding or anything on it. it looks good in there. And obviously it's a nice little spot that you moisten this down a little bit. They can get some water from there as well. Man, I really just realized I chewed the heck out of my thumbs today. It feel terrible. These close-ups are gonna get some gnarly thumb action. So this one will probably be in there for a little while. We'll see how it goes. Again, the growth rate's been good. Right now it's probably, eh, maybe right around two inches or so which is again pretty good growth rate for about a year you know not 
blowing it off the charts by any stretch of your imagination, but enough that if you buy a little sling, you can know you're going to have a decent looking, you know, spider and not too long. But great eater so far. Again, keep it a little moist. What I miss, temperatures, as always, my temperatures here, usually in wintertime, it's kept right around 73. The, the temperature in the room is kept at 73 degrees. The higher shelves will be like 75. Lower shelves might be a little lower. This one's been right on the 73 shelf. It's grown completely fine. We'll see if it picks up a little bit in the summer when things in here get a little bit warmer. But there we go, C. cyaneus, awesome spider, beautiful spider, and very excited to have this one and be able to get this footage of it because I've had a couple people ask me how they were doing because they saw the original video I posted. It's doing great, and hopefully it'll continue to grow really well, and maybe we'll do an update, update video in a couple months and see how it's getting along. All right, woo. Yeah, Slip. just booked. <laughs> Now again, this is a dwarf species, and if it does only get to be two inches or so, the next container or enclosure I put her in will probably be slightly bigger than that one. She's been a sweetheart overall. Temperament's been really good. Good growth rate. I do want to point out this is one of the specimens I had that did bury itself. And I, I bring this up only because we don't want to go around digging up all of our tarantulas, but it does need to be known that there are instances where if the tarantula digs itself deep enough and covers up its burrow, sometimes they don't come up to eat. That's because in the wild, they would find prey items in their own burrows and they wouldn't have to surface. Unfortunately, when they're in captivity, that doesn't happen. And you get a situation where the spider might have molted, be all the way down at the bottom and not come up even though there's food around the top. Now, just to give people a heads up, the idea for this isn't to drop live prey items down into that burrow. Do not do that, especially mealworms or superworms. They can attack the spider if it is molting down there. They can turn into beetles, which can also harm the spider. You never want to drop anything alive down there because I've heard people going, oh, I'll just drop it on a mealworm. I wouldn't do that, honestly. But what you can do is open up the top of the burrow very carefully, drop a pre-killed prey item right on the surface. If they're ready to eat, they will go up. Even if they're going up to close off that burrow, they will find the prey item, they will eat it. And I've had ones come up, grab the prey item, eat it, and then close it back up again. And I've had to do it again. So just a heads up, but this does not mean go digging up all your tarantulas. Just use common sense, observe them. And if it seems like it is molted, but it is not coming up to eat, that might be something you have to look at. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate it. Click the little circle with my logo right up there. If you want to check out some more videos, you can find them over in here. If you don't want to do either of those, totally cool. I'll be here if you need me. As far as comments, if you take the time to comment, I will take the time to respond, but just know I tend to get a lot of comments, not only on the current videos, but a lot of the older videos, so it can take me a little while. So just be patient. If you write me, I will write back. That will do it for this one. As always, guys, stay safe, be kind. We'll catch you all next time.